little introduction here. My name is Christopher Bass. Um, this is my son. His name is Christopher Bass as well. And I am um, one of co-founders of a company called Monte Bass Academy. And essentially, it is a personal development organization that seeks to help uh, individuals, teams, and organizations purposely win. Um, before I get started, can anyone give me a definition of what they think winning is? Not losing. That's a negative definition, but that's a definition. Let's, let's think of a positive definition, right? What uh, is winning? I mean, you guys know basketball, right? So what's winning? Go ahead. Achieving something. Like, Achieving something. Yeah. Okay. It's simple. Okay. Um, does winning always imply uh, competition? No. No. Okay. How so? Explain. So at Monda Bass Academy, we define winning in three ways, right? Uh, winning is achieving, as you said, uh, but it's a premeditative goal with the object of winning right, against a competitor. Now, a competitor doesn't necessarily always mean someone else. A competitor can mean that you are competing with yourself. For example, let's say that you have the goal of losing weight. Is there a competitor there? Who's the competitor? Yourself. Your lesser self, right? That lesser self that doesn't want you to win, that's going to give you reasons for why it is that, you know what, you've tried to lose weight before, you've never done it before, let's just go to the refrigerator, right? That's the lesser self. That better self is that self that wants to win, that desires to win, right? So winning always involves competition, whether that competition with someone else or so, okay, so think of that for a moment, okay? Um, I want you to really take a moment to think deeply about the next exercise that we're gonna do, right? Think deeply and profoundly about the type of life that you desire to have or the type of future you believe you deserve. Okay? And I want you to write down in one sentence the type of life that you want whether it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, the type of life that you want or the future you believe you deserve. Go ahead and do that for me, please. Now, I want you to do yourself a favor here. Right? And I want you to be as specific and clear as you can. Because when we're speaking about winning, Specificity and clarity of desire is of paramount importance. Now with that image firm in your mind, I next would like for you to answer the question of how. How do you think or how do you believe you're going to acquire or to achieve that life or that future? Do you believe that it's going to come naturally or do you believe that some work will be required to get it? Okay. So next, write down how you believe that you will achieve that. Now, I don't want you to necessarily think about the individual steps that you will take in order to achieve that future, just the broad method, whether it will come naturally or whether you believe that some work will be required to do that. Now, if you were someone who answered that question, that some work will be required for you to get the type of life that you want, my next question is, who will do the work? Right. Who will do the work that's going to allow for you to have the future that you desire to have, right. the life that you believe that you deserve? Now, you might think of those important people in your lives and think in terms of what roles or responsibility, if any, they have in helping you acquire that life, whether it's your parents, your coaches, your teachers, your siblings, your friends, your boyfriend or girlfriends. What role, if any, do you think that they have in helping you create that future? Okay. 
Last question before we see on it. Place the focus on yourself now. Right? What role, if any, do you believe that you have in creating that life that you desire to have or the future you believe that you deserve? What role do you have? Now, you guys may be wondering why the question, right? Is this, uh, is this school here? Uh, but e essentially, uh, the questions are geared to help <coughs> prime your mind for uh, the speech that uh, I will do today. And... Reese, Max, and Maddie, please come to the front office. You are going home. Reese, Max, and Maddie, please come to the front office. You are going home. And there is a saying, you guys might be too young, uh, with some of the older gentlemen in the room might have heard this saying before, but there's a saying that really will help us to begin uh, our conversation today. If you keep doing what you've always done, you will keep getting what you've always gotten. If you want to change the outcome, you change your responses. You change what you do. Let me repeat that, right? You went through a quick exercise of the type of life that you want, the life that you believe you deserve. However it is that you're going about that today, if you're not do, if you're not getting the types of results that you believe that you should be having, you might want to look at what you're doing. Because I think it was Einstein that said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again but expecting to results. Has anyone ever heard that before? Okay. So if you want something differently in your life, right, you're going to have to do some things a little bit differently. So in the spirit of change, I really want to explore the concept of personal responsibility. Right. And I want to try to achieve two objectives with this speech today. Uh, I want you guys to begin to think a little differently about what it means to take 100% responsibility for creating the type of life that you want, for being the person that you aspire to be, to do the things that you long to do. That's my first subject. Think a little bit differently about what personal responsibility means. At the same time, I want you guys to begin to develop some basic skills for becoming more responsible in your life. Okay. Now, to get started, if you answered the how question by stating that you believe that what you want or the future that you desire will come naturally, let me tell you now that you're going to be disappointed in what you are going to learn today. Because in Montebas Academy, we operate from the position that a meaningful, prosperous, successful life don't just happen. It happens because people are willing to be committed to the process to do the work necessary to make it happen. Does that make sense? Okay, now, if you also answer the question of how by there will be some work that will get done, you might be equally disappointed.
once you realize the truth in that statement that you are 100% responsible for creating the life that you desire, you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to begin to act today to bring about that life that you desire, if it's important enough, or you're going to resign to admit that what you want is not important enough to compel you to act. Does that make sense? Because if you're like most folks, once you realize that to get what you want out of life requires your responsibility, 100%, you'll begin to do what people normally do when they accept responsibility in their life. They begin to take actions today. Not tomorrow, but today. Because the consequence of acting today is that you will begin to affirmatively move in the direction of achieving your heart's desire. And once in action mode, right, there is a greater probability, not a guarantee, but a greater probability that you will achieve that which you desire to achieve. Does that make sense? Have I, have I lost anybody yet? Now, so just think about this, right? With this firmly in mind, right, that you are 100% responsible for having the type of life that you believe that you deserve, for being the person you aspire to be, for doing the things that you long to do, you and only you are 100% responsible for that. Nobody else is. Right? Once you realize that, the question now becomes, how do I do it? At, um, at, at the company Montevas Academy, we do a lot of research on winning and its cousins achieving its success. And, and there's a book that we came across doing our research. It's um, called The Success Principle by an author named Jack Canfield. Right? And in his book, he has a chapter on um, what it means to take 100% responsibility in your life. And he outlines four broad steps, and those are the steps that I'm going to walk through with you guys today. Because remember, part of my objective is to help you begin to think differently about what personal responsibility is and why it is important. But the second objective is to have you, once you leave here today, to at least begin to develop some basic skills of what it means to begin to take personal responsibility in your life. And those four steps are no longer blaming others, no longer making excuses for what you were doing or not doing, no longer complaining about the things in which you have no ability to change, and start taking purposeful action today to bring it about. Okay. Now, I'm going to begin my with the first point of, you know, blaming others. And can anyone answer the question for me of why do we blame others for the lacks in our lives, whether it's what we don't have, where we're not, or who we're not? Why do we blame others for where we are today? <coughs> Does anyone have an answer to that question? Yes. We don't want to accept don't want to accept responsibility. That's so nuts. We don't want to accept responsibility, right? Because when, why should we blame others? You know, and I understand that. You know, you guys are probably you know teenagers, and it is hard to accept right now uh, that you know you cannot go back and change your past, right? And you may not have control over every aspect of your life today. But think about this, right? When we blame others for the circumstances, conditions, quality, and direction of our lives, what are we doing? We're ultimately taking away our own personal power and giving the power to someone else. That person to create for us, to provide for us, that which we say that we desire. Does that make sense? Right? Uh, because understand this, right? 
whenever you give someone else that power, and what if that person fell short on delivering upon your expectation? Remember, people generally fall short. They don't necessarily, some people may have the best intentions, but people generally fall short on delivering upon the expectation or the desires that we have. We typically <coughs> will get discouraged, we will get frustrated, and we will become resentful that the person failed to do the things which we invested power in them to do. Because remember, when we're blaming somebody else, essentially we're taking away our own power and giving that to another person. To say that I am investing the power in you to provide for me the type of life that I say that I want, the future that I desire. But when we really think about it, all of these negative and debilitating feelings are really avoidable. Because why should we make it someone else's responsibility to bring about the type of life that we want? And as I was putting together my speech uh, together a couple of days ago, I was thinking about that question, right? Why should we make it someone else's responsibility? And there's only one plausible answer that I can come up with, right? because we either don't believe in ourselves or our capacity to make it happen, right? And if that is the case, then we're not talking about a responsibility problem, we're talking about a belief problem. And that really is a conversation for another speech. So the next exercise that I want you guys to do is to think about who or what do you normally Paul, blame? Paul, Darvis, please come to the membership office. For the Paul, way that your life Darvis, is today. please come to the membership office. I don't want you to necessarily think about the whys of blaming, but who and what do you normally blame for where your life is today or where it is not, for who you are today or who you're not, for what you have or what you don't have, who or what do you normally blame? Please write that down. This is the first step, guys, in becoming or taking 100% responsibility for creating the type of life that you want. Okay? That's the first step, because once you begin to take this first step, you take the focus off of someone else and place that focus solely on yourself, where it should be. But now, if you tend to find all kind of reasons for why you can't and while you haven't done what you know you need to do, you still will be failing to take 100% responsibility for bringing about the type of life that you desire. Right? You know, I read somewhere the other day that making excuses is a way of getting someone to cut us some slack. Right? To overlook a certain type of behavior that is inappropriate in that particular situation. Think about this now. If that's the case, why should anyone, including ourselves, give us a pass for failing to do the things that we know that we are supposed to do to bring about that which we say that we want, that which we say that we desire, right? Because if you're unwilling to do the hard and necessary work that is required to bring about your desires, then why not simply admit that the thing which you say you desire the most is not important enough that will compel you to act. So, you, so remember, when you stop blaming others, right, you begin to place that focus on yourself. But if you make excuses, right, or as some people would call justifications or reasons why you're not doing what you know you need to do today, right, if you're making those excuses for yourself, then you still are not moving in a direction of becoming 100% responsible for creating the type of life that you desire. Okay. Because understand this, guys. When you want something badly enough, right, you will find a way to get it. And if you don't know how, 
you will find a way to learn the method of how to do it, and then you will execute on it. Because the reason why I wanted in the first exercise for you to really think specifically about the type of life that you desire, the future that you want, because this should be your harsh desire, right? In 10 years, right? Uh, I want to be a millionaire. Or in 25 years, I want to be in the NBA, right? Or maybe in 30 years, I want to run for president of the United States, right? Whatever your desire is, you have to want it badly enough to where you're going to be willing to accept responsibility for bringing that about, but as well as do the work necessary to achieve it. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm not speaking too fast. Buddy Gay, please come to the front office. You're going home. Buddy Gay, come to the front office. You're going home. Buddy Gay. Because, remember, if you keep finding reasons or excuses for why you haven't done what you know you need to do today, you will never have what you want. You'll never achieve the desire. So my next exercise, I want you guys to think of the excuses that you normally give yourself, whether you verbalize or not, some of the mental excuses that you give yourself for why it is that you're not doing what you know you need to do, right? My son, he wants to play basketball, right? And we're, we're training, and he wants to be a point guard. He likes Chris Paul and uh, Steph Curry, right? So he knows that, you know, after school, we go to the gym, we practice. We practice 30 minutes on ball handling. We practice on passing. We practice on driving. So he knows that there are certain things that he will need to do in order to achieve his dream of getting in the NBA. Right? But if he says, you know what? I'm tired today. That's an excuse. Right? Or you know what? I want to you know, watch TV or I want to go hang out with my friends. Or I don't feel like it today. Right? Those are excuses. And if you keep making those excuses, you're going to find out that in five years, you still have not achieved what it is that you say you wanted to achieve. So, the next exercise is write down some of the excuses that you typically give yourself for why you're not doing what you know you need to do. And trust me, guys, if you're not doing this exercise, you should really do this exercise because once you leave here today, you should begin to already be thinking differently about personal responsibility. But now you're going to have some basic skills of how to now begin to take more responsibility in your life. All right. Now, step one, of course, was no longer blaming others. Step two was stop making excuses. And my step three is stop complaining. Right. Now, that's very hard for folks to do. Because understand this. Complaining is generally, generally defined in a dictionary as expressing dissatisfaction or annoyance with the state of affairs or an event. And many people would agree to the statement that complaining is a great way of venting out frustrations. And I would agree. But complaining can also exacerbate an already bad or tense situation. Particularly if we're complaining to someone that has no ability or no power to bring about changes to the thing to which we are complaining about. How many of you, typically when you make a complaint about something that you're frustrated with, you generally will complain to someone that doesn't even have the power to change what the thing that you're complaining about? How many of us do that? Right? Now, like complaining... Well, let me ask this question. How do we generally respond when we receive a complaint? <coughs> do we not take it personal? Do we not get defensive? Miss Sage to the front office, you are going home. Sage to the front office, you are going home. Sage. Do we not then try to turn the tables and now begin to complain about what the original complainer has done or is not doing? Right. Those are how we typically respond to complaints. And this is really nothing more than a vicious cycle, right? Because think about this for a moment, right? When we complain, we are usually hoping that the person whom we are complaining to can somehow bring about a desirable outcome. Okay? And again, if we're making it someone else's responsibility to bring about a desirable outcome, 
a couple of things will happen. Remember, people generally fall short, even if they have the best intentions. People generally fall short of delivering on the expectations that we have or the desires that we have. That doesn't make them bad people. That just simply states that that's a human condition. So if complaining is like blaming where we're making it someone else's responsibility to bring about the desired future that we want, doesn't it make sense to stop complaining? At least stop complaining about the things to which we have no ability to change. Right? Because whenever that happens, right, whenever we place that responsibility in someone else's hands and they fail to deliver, we will normally either get frustrated and begin to complain a little more, or we may begin to use other methods to get what we want, like manipulation or coercion. And are these responses appropriate for someone that's seeking to be more responsible in their life? I would say no, because there are other behaviors that that person should be doing other than complaining. Okay, so my next question, I want you to think about who do you normally complain to and what do you normally complain about? Okay. Who do you normally complain to and what do you normally complain about? Can we give you a few minutes to write that? Guys, uh, and sorry ladies, I don't mean to use the term guys, it's just that's you know, common. Um, <clears throat> assuming 100% responsibility in your life is Christopher hard. Christopher Mejia to the front office, you are going home. Christopher Mejia to the front office, you are going home. Christopher Mejia. <laughs> it is very difficult. That's the reason why most people, well, I won't say most people, that's probably an overstatement, but that's, there's a large percentage of people in our society today that refuse to take responsibility because of the work that involves in that. But think about the tremendous benefits that you will get from that, right? Because whenever you take 100% responsibility for where your life is today or where it is not, for what you have today or what you don't have, right? For who you are today or who you are not, it gives you a sense of empowerment because you are the one that's in the driver's seat that will determine whether or not if you will achieve what it is that you desire to achieve. If you want to win in your quest to be better, have better, do better. Make sense? Okay. Because remember, all of this starts with no longer blaming others, no longer making excuses for yourself, no longer complaining about the things to which you have no power to change. But it also involves the fourth step of that equation, guys. Meaning it involves taking purposeful actions to bring about the type of life that you desire. Right? Now, I referenced earlier the author, Jack Canfield, in his book called The Success Principles. And if there are any readers, I would really recommend that you, you get this book. And let me just give you guys a quick overview of my life, right? Um, I'm 45 years old, but I uh, came from a very dysfunctional family. Uh, there were a lot of drugs, there was a lot of abuse. Uh, eventually it got to the point to where I left home at the age of 13. And I lived on the streets for two and a half years. So you can imagine that at 13, living on the streets, I probably got into a lot of trouble, right? Trouble so much to where at the age of 19, I found myself in prison. Okay. Um, the first three to four years of that incarceration was solitary confinement because the mentality that I had while I was on the streets, I brought it with me to prison. And I was actually considered a, a risk to the general population. So think about that, right? I'm in prison and they say that I am a menace to the general population. So they put me in solitary confinement for three and a half to four years. And this was the lowest point in my life. 
but was also an opportunity for me to begin to do some things differently. I began to read a lot more. I began to think a lot more. I began to make better decisions, which led to better actions. Now, in total, I spent 10 years in prison. Eventually, I got out. Well, while I was in prison, I got my GED. I got an associate's degree. I got out. I got a bachelor's degree, and today I have an, I have an MBA. All right. I've started my own companies. I've been in leadership positions of a number of companies. Right. I own my own home out in Castaic. I have a son. I'm married. Right. But I still have challenges. So I'm telling you that story, right? Because until you begin to take responsibility for your life, the way that your life is now. Your life does not have to end up that way. I could have decided to take the same road that the guys that I was having conversation with in prison, right? And eventually I would have gotten out, but I would have found myself right back in prison being what they call a statistic, right? But I'm not, right? Now, uh, I may not be as successful, right, as someone that didn't go to prison, but I can tell you what. Based upon the definition of what it means to be successful from where I started to where I am today, I would say that I am winning that battle, right? So think about this for a moment, right? And, and I mention that because uh, books gave me an opportunity to go beyond my limited environment and my limited imagination to now think of some possibilities. And the book that I'm referring to you, Jack Canfield's uh, Principles of Success, has 66 principles in there that if you can master that book, you will become much better than what you are today. And I'll be wrapping up here in a moment. Sorry. Um, but in his book, he states that we either allow, we either create or allow everything that happens to us. Everything. Right? The things that we get or we fail to get in life, the things that happen to us or fail to happen to us are because we either took some action that led to a situation or failed to take action that prevented that situation from happening. Make sense? Okay. So, in kind of closing up my speech, I really want you to, guys to go back to the initial quote that I stated earlier, right? If you keep doing what you've always done, you will keep getting what you've always got. If you want to change the outcome, you change your responses, you change what you're doing. Because all this really means that instead of blaming others for what you don't have, begin to take the stance that while you cannot change the past, and while you might not have control over your entire uh, conditions now, you can take the stance today that I refuse to give anybody else responsibility other than myself for creating the type of life that I desire. Instead of making excuses for yourself, be honest with yourself and either do the things that you know that you need to do to bring about your desire or admit to yourself that the thing to which you desire to most you don't want it badly enough to take matters into your own hands to make it happen. Okay. And instead of complaining about the things to which you cannot control, you simply accept them for what they are. But you move on to change those things you can change. And if you must complain about the lacks of someone else in your life because they have the power or the ability to change it, don't really complain, make a request. If you do three things instead of complaining, you'll find that you will get a lot further ahead. If you state the request, state what it is. State the reasons for the request and then give Explain to the person who's granting the request what personal experience they will have by granting that request. And this is a better method than simply complaining. Because remember what complaining generally do, what complaining generally uh, what happens when you complain? It creates a vicious cycle. Right? These last three steps are just concrete example of what it means to begin to take purposeful action for your life. 
But in, in kind of wrapping up, um, I sat down, you know, at my desk the other day, and I was thinking of some famous quotes to kind of uh, epitomize the essential message that I wanted to present today, right? And as I went through, as I was thinking, I really didn't find anything, so I sat back a little bit, and I closed my eyes. And I began to think of my life. I began to think of all the books that I've read. I began to think of some of the seminars that I visited. And within about 15 to 20 minutes in that meditative state, it hit me. Right? If it is to be, it is up to me. Think about that, guys. If it is to be, it is up to me. And that is a very short statement, but it packs a punch. Because if you want to have the things that you want in life, right? if you want to be the type of person that you want to be, do the things that you long to do, it's no one's responsibility other than yours to do just that. Because if you internalize that, if it is to be the, it is to me, then I have a question to ask. Right? If it is not you, tell me who.